Good evening. Asbestos and smoking were praised for years as being necessary and good, as mobile phones are now. The industry that polices the nation's 20 million mobiles is repeatedly having to defend claims the phones are unsafe. But what you're about to see, if you believe a former mobile phone salesman and a leading brain surgeon, is the first true sign of the danger your mobile poses to your life. Laura Sparks investigates. I think it would be foolish, very foolish, to just assume that there is no relationship and not take any sort of precautions. What makes me angry is that they continue to sell these phones without uh, making sure that they, they are safe. It's a popular product, but overwhelmingly it's a safe product. The evidence is mounting. Brain tumours are on the increase. Even neurosurgeons are concerned. But the industry stands firm. I believe that uh, mobile phones gave me this tumour and I blame the mobile phone companies. David Smith faithfully sold mobile phones for 10 years. Little did he know he was getting paid to sell something that he believes now has ruined his life. I was angry at the mobile phone companies um, and also at the telecommunications companies too because, um, you know, they've put this product on the market without the, the proper research into what it does and um, I guess they've used this as guinea pigs. So, David, this white mass is the tumour. David was just 30 years old when he underwent three operations to remove the tumour, as big as a golf ball, around his acoustic nerve. During the surgery, the nerve was removed and another was accidentally damaged, causing David to lose muscular control in his face. So, David, the tumour was just here, is that right, behind your ear? That's right, behind my right ear. Where did you used to talk on the mobile phone? I used to use my right ear as uh, my phone ear. I used to use the mobile phone maybe one or two hours a, a day for the, the 10 years or so before I was, like, diagnosed. David's tumour is one that studies have linked to mobile phone use. Professor Bruce Armstrong is head of Sydney University's Public Health Unit. He spent 10 years looking at the research between mobile phones and brain tumours. There was evidence of a twofold increase in risk of tumours. While David is trying to piece his life back together, he worries for the millions who constantly use their mobile. You see 10 year olds running around the street using mobile phones and I just wonder how the mobile phones are going to affect their, um, the development of their brains. The young people of today, the they're going to be a lot worse off than me. Enrico Grani, too, blames his brain tumour on heavy mobile phone use over 10 years. I had the analogue phone and it was like a toy, you know what I mean? You get a new toy, you talk all the time. He was diagnosed with a tumour in the parietal lobe, situated just above his right ear. Which is right here, right within the near-field radiation plume of the antenna of the phones that I, that I was using. After the operation, he was in a coma for three days and suffered a stroke. I blame the cell phone industry, right, blinded by greed, right, because uh, they've known about this for many, many years, but they still deny it. None of this surprises those in the business of brain surgery. A prominent Canberra neurologist has written a research report into the link between mobile phones and brain tumours. He believes mobiles will be the next great public health issue and compares their effects with those of smoking and asbestos. He's calling on government and industry to take immediate steps to reduce the exposure of mobile phones to consumers. There is certainly an element of concern, not only from myself, but from a lot of my colleagues. As a neurosurgeon, Richard Bittar has seen a rise in brain tumours in the last 15 years, but says it's hard to point the finger solely at mobile phone use. Yet Richard tries to use his mobile phone only on loudspeaker or uses a nearby landline when possible. A lot of my neurosurgical colleagues who um, go even further and, and really try to minimise the amount of mobile phone use they, they um, engage in and I think that that reflects an underlying concern that there may well be a relationship. His warning to consumers? 
minimise the amount of time you spend with your mobile phone up against your ear. But Australian Mobile Telecommunications Association's Chris Althaus isn't concerned. Are you worried about getting a tumour? No. Do you use your phone every day? Uh, I use my phone every day and I use it quite a lot every day. Um, so I'm very comfortable, personally, with the way that the research uh, effort uh, conveys to markets like Australia and globally uh, the level of safety that you can uh, that you can enjoy while using a mobile phone. I think we need to keep an open mind about this. I think that burying our head in the sand is uh, not not a good way to go on this issue. It ruined the life that I had previously. I, I had all these plans and and ideas and so much hope for the future and. Now that's all changed. Um, I've had to reevaluate everything and uh... And neither David nor Enrico can now work because of their brain surgery and their medical bills are going up. Laura Sparks, our reporter.